Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Aspetar staff and especially Philip Landreau for his kind invitation. And I will uh, take the follow for the entire ankle impingement uh, because uh, we know now uh, the etiology, the diagnosis, who, which is very simple. And uh, now the problem is uh, how to treat it and to try to reach the uh, what we want for everybody is 100% uh, of satisfaction for the patients. First is the uh, uh, accuracy in the diagnosis. Uh, the second step, I think, and this is the first, first step of the treatment, is a local injection. It is very important for those uh, entire uh, impingement. Uh, the, the main problem is the good indication for uh, treatment and uh, arthroscopic treatment. And of course, the, the gold standard is uh, the arthroscopic treatment with a reliable surgical technique to reach uh, a good uh, results and fast re uh, recovery and after the post-op care. So first of all, uh, the clinical diagnosis, and Johannes Stoll uh, showed us how to make a, a sure diagnosis by palpation with some criteria. The main problem is to uh, be sure it's not uh, an ankle laxity, of course, with uh, a symptomatic uh, instability and uh, objective laxity uh, of the ankle. You are sure it's not the, only the ankle impingement that is painful, but a problem with the laxity of the symptoms of the, of the ligament. But um, sometimes with micro instability and micro laxity, uh, perhaps there are some painful uh, and anti or painful ankles that might be uh, treated like ankle impingement, but might be uh, micro laxity of the ankles. The second step and the first step for the treatment is uh, the local injection. When you diagnose on your ankle uh, by palpation, it's an anteromedial or anterolateral impingement, uh, the first step is to make uh, a local injection at the seat of the, the painful uh, palpation to uh, confirm your diagnosis and in uh, one third of the cases to, to have a therapeutic effect because uh, in th nearly 30% of cases, with this injection, the patient will have a complete relief of their symptoms and you will have treat the, your patient without any operation, we are without anything else. So this in, infiltration is very important. Uh, you can uh, do this uh, by your own way or with ultrasonography guided um, to be sure you are on the good uh, uh, localization. But it's very important to keep in mind that the first treatment of uh, those impingement uh, might be uh, done by a uh, local injection. For the best result, you have to have good indications, and the best indication are for a young athlete with a short delay of impingement, I, I mean less than one year after the ankle trauma. Um, we show with different series that bone impingement have better results than sh soft tissues impingement. And of course, you have to be sure there is no laxity. And the main problem, to, to, to my opinion, is the micro laxity with the difficult uh, diagnostic uh, data and criteria for the moment. We showed in a multicenter study we made in, in France uh, that uh, with the treatment, arthroscopic treatment of um, anterior ankle impingement, we can have bad results. And the criteria for bad results were the age with the uh, older or less younger patient, uh, you might have bad or f lower uh, functional results with the patient tha that are 12 years more than uh, the patient with good results. And the delay uh, between the beginning of uh, uh, the, the symptoms and the treatment uh, was uh, 22, uh, more or less two years for the good results and three years for the bad results. And of course, in case of chondropathy associated with the anterior ankle impingement, uh, these are some criteria for uh, bad results. For the treatment, the, this is uh, the kingdom of the arthroscopy, anterior ankle arthroscopy, with uh, the landmarks and uh, portal that uh, Pao showed us uh, very uh, uh, gently. And, uh, you have to keep in mind you, you must stay in hyperdorsal flexion. There is no need for uh, distraction. There is no need for anything else. Just you put your 
plantar aspect of the, the foot on, on, your, on your body, you, you keep your uh, ankle in hyperdorsal flexion to uh, create a big uh, entire working area and to have a good uh, access to the entire part of the ankle to see everything, to a avoid any uh, injury of the, of the neurovascular bundle or the tendons. And this is the, the position you, you, you have to keep to, to, to see this, uh, this entire working area. So this is the first step for the entire ankle impingement. This is synovectomy. You are in full dorsal flexion. You, you are with your shaver, and you have to see your shaver every, every time. Full dorsal flexion every time. With the, in our um, university hospital with the resident, uh, I can uh, remark that with the, after a few seconds, they, they stop to have uh, this dorsal flexion. It, it can be dangerous, so you have to keep in mind uh, to, to keep this dorsal flexion. It's very important because with the suction and with the, the, uh, the uh, shaver, you can make some uh, damages. And after, you will be able to uh, uh, reach the lateral groove, malleolar groove, and after the medial malleolar groove. The first step of the treatment is the removal of the synovitis. This is the removal of the distal part of the uh, tibial uh, fibular, anterior tibial fibular ligament that may be uh, the uh, symptomatic uh, anterolateral uh, impingement. So the first step is the synovectomy. Even if you have a big osteophyte, what is painful is the impingement between the synovitis and the scar tissues. So you have to, to remove, to, to clean your space, and to, to have a big uh, synovectomy of all your ankle before uh, beginning to remove the osteophyte. In fact, your osteophyte, you, you can go for the, the removal of the osteophyte just at the end of the procedure when you have cleaned everything in the entire working area when uh, you see perfectly your uh, tip of your malleolus, your entire uh, distal marge of the tibia, and your neck of the talus, and after you will remove your um, osteophyte. Some um, uh, tricks for this, because you have to be careful and to, to keep the full dorsal flexion to avoid damages on the cartilage, and the main problem is to uh, remove all the osteophyte and non, not to uh, have remnant osteophyte on the proximal part of the tibia or uh, more frequently on the neck of the talus. And as showed us uh, Johannes Toll, one of the best localization and more frequent localization of the osteophyte is not only the entire uh, distal uh, tibia, but uh, more the anteromedial osteophyte than we can see in the soccer player and probably after this uh, repetitive microtrauma. So you have to remove this uh, big, very frequently very big osteophyte that uh, can make uh, more than one centimeter of uh, uh, prominence. And you remove this part that is uh, uh, very large. And uh, by changing the portal, you can remove all the entire part of the me medial malleolus. This is a very frequent localization of your uh, bon bony impingement. And uh, of course, the AME view is very uh, useful for this. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, uh, avoid this and uh, make a cleaning, but uh, don't remove uh, without removing this uh, osteophyte. So it's very important after the cleaning and the synovectomy to to make a complete uh, removal of the osteophyte and in the medial part. For the tricks for the entire arthroscopy, you have to uh, check every zone, uh, every area that is the distal tibia, very frequent and very easy to see because that w when you, you begin for your, your arthroscopy, you will see perfectly your entire marge of your tibia. Uh, less frequently, we, we have to just to see under and to see the neck of the talus and to keep in mind that uh, there are very frequent uh, osteophytes on the neck of the talus that are symptomatic um, too and of course the uh, lateral and medial malleolar groove. 
The main risk is to uh, have remaining osteophyte, and when you begin with your uh, arthroscope, um, you can you are very happy because you see your osteophyte and you want to remove it. So you have to keep in mind to to, to keep it for the end of the procedure because it's sometimes bleeding, and so it's not so, so easy at the uh, at the beginning. And if you begin with your your burr inside at the level of the of the joint and inside and going uh, from the level of the joint to the capsule, you will uh, have the risk of uh, have remnant osteophyte with the recurrence of the symptoms because of in the dorsal flexion uh, you will have uh, the same symptoms. So the technique is the opposite and as Johannes told shows us that the osteophyte is not, is not in the capsule but is uh, inside the capsule, you have the space you have to, to make a large debridement, large synovectomy to see your origin of your osteophyte and to go from uh, the insertion of the osteophyte to the level of the joint to be sure you remove your osteophyte from the beginning to the end. And at the end, you have to smooth the edge and to be sure there are no uh, more bony prominence and uh, you have to remove everything. There are three localization of problems. The uh, junction of uh, between the capsule and the anterior marge of the tibia that can uh, be the localization of some spurs. So you have to be very careful and check and remove every um, spurs at this level. This uh, part with non uh, weight bearing uh, cartilage when you have to smooth this uh, area on the anterior marge of the uh, tibia and this part, the neck of the talus, because the neck of the talus in, is concave, and if you have a bony prominence of your neck of your talus, that is the, the signification. It's a big osteophyte, and you have to remove it uh, carefully. So that's for the technique by itself. The, per, the, p, the patient can be a protein in the uh, uh, ambulatory, uh, one day surgery. After, for the post-op care, it's quite simple. Full weight bearing as tolerated, foot elevation and nice. Uh, Self-rehabilitation for the first months uh, to avoid uh, too much, too aggressive rehabilitation. And uh, to, to keep to the patient to, to say to have ankle dorsal flexion and plantar flexion to avoid uh, a big stiffness. Um, what can we expect for this treatment is uh, arthroscopy can lead better results and functional outcomes than open uh, treatment because of uh, the problem of the scars and of uh, the stiffness and uh, of uh, cutaneous and infectious problems sometimes because there, there are less complications with arthroscopy and faster recovery. This is the best indication for uh, entire arthroscopy. Uh, but you have to have a reliable technique, always the same uh, steps to be uh, careful and to be sure you, you are removing your uh, impingement with careful um, technique and without uh, creating uh, injuries. Uh, the treatment uh, with this, the improvement of this technique can lead to more than two thirds of uh, good to excellent results with less and less complications. Uh, with this entire synovectomy standardized uh, with a standardized technique and uh, begin with the synovectomy and finish with the removal of the stovite if they exist. Uh, we made this study with the uh, uh, multicenter study with the uh, anterior ankle impingement treated by uh, uh, arthroscopy after failure of um, injection. Uh, for uh, the people, they have, of course, significant functional improvement, 86% uh, of good to excellent results, 77% of satisfied patient, and uh, sports recovery at the same level in uh, nearly 70% uh, so that is uh, uh, comparable to other studies. So uh, as conclusion, what is important to keep in mind is the, that the ankle, the entire ankle impeachment, a lot of people talk about this, but the diagnosis is very simple. You just have to be sure it's not a uh, micro laxity or a uh, laxity. So be very careful of this because if you treat uh, an impeachment on a laxity, the result will be bad, of course. You have to, at the first step, to make a local injection to uh, confirm your diagnosis and sometimes to uh, treat your patient without anything else. The 
treatment is an arthroscopic procedure with ankle arthroscopic uh, uh, technique, uh, very uh, simple, but with uh, some uh, tricks that you have uh, uh, to be careful. And you have to have your patient selection before, because for uh, those people with the beginning of uh, osteoarthritis or, begin or for older people, of course, the result will, will not be as good as possible. Even if they will feel perhaps better, you have to, to keep this in mind. Thank you for your attention.